Hello, everybody, and welcome to Virtual Bourbon. As always, my name is Steve Akeley, and we have a fun event tonight. We're going to be talking about Old Overholt, which is a very old brand, and you know, whiskey history gets a little dicey, but if you believe what uh, some people say, it's the oldest continuous brand in the country. So that's pretty interesting. They did make it through prohibition. We'll talk about a timeline and how that the company uh, managed to still maintain through prohibition, but we'll get to that in just a second. I think it's important to go ahead and pour our first one. We're going to be tasting four items. Again, they've got a rebranded, a new look to them. We're going to be going by proof. So that means we're going to start with their bottom shelf uh, item. And this is the one that uh, was pre-existing. This is the one that's been in place since really since 1810, according to uh, to the legend, of course. Not that legend, but just legend people talking. <laughs> <laughs> we have a legend in the house here, and not, not him. Uh, so we'll pour that one. We'll, we won't drink it just yet, uh, but we're going to do like we normally do with the tasting. We're going to taste all of these. We'll go up one time, and then we'll go come back to them too. Just, uh, but we always like to pour a little bit ahead as we as we talk in that so let's let's put that one aside then and then we'll get into a little bit of the history here before we get started with the the tasting part of this so again it goes back to i mean company history goes back to 1810 but family history in the united states goes back to 1800 so henry oberholzer uh, moved from uh, Germany to Pennsylvania. They did change their name to Overholt, uh, Americanized version of their name. So they became the Overholts. And it was farmer. Uh, Henry was a farmer. And he um, would make whiskey just as most farmers did at the end of the season with those extra crops, things that they couldn't keep over the winter, any excess they have. And then they would utilize that, whether it was to drink it for their own personal enjoyment, to sell some excess stock or to trade. Mostly uh, things were, were about trading back then. So they would make whiskey with the, um, with their rye and, uh, um, that they, that they would uh, make or grow, excuse me, uh, at the farm. But in 1810, Henry's son, Abraham, came into the family business and he decided to take the whiskey business and kind of focus on that uh, as opposed to just being a farmer. So he uh, came out with a whiskey called Old Farm Whiskey, which was known as really wasn't a whole lot of branding back then. But in the early days, they would refer to it as the old uh, farm whiskey because he was making it on a farm. It didn't really have a specific name or anything like that, but it became a, a, an official business. And uh, in 1810 and, you know, started out, literally very small they grew uh in the 1820s to 10 to 15 gallons a day so you're talking about what we think today of a uh, you know standard size barrel of 53 gallons they were making about 10 to 15 gallons a day again barrels different sizes back then um they were and it may take more than one day to fill a barrel i don't know exactly what size barrels they were using but uh so that's and of course we're talking mostly sold in new make too so uh storage would be in barrels but a lot of it was drank as new make you're not necessarily aging things back then but uh abraham ran the company and started to grow it and uh, it continued to grow under his leadership in 1843 they began advertising in the local newspapers. Uh, so the company had grown big enough where they could actually take on advertising. By 1859, they had grown to 860 gallons a day. So you think about the early days, 10 to 15 gallons a day. Now they're at 860. And that's pretty impressive, actually. So you think about in the uh, that, that time frame, 1859, that's a lot. This is where I need Justine, my backup. I'm going to cough here don't have a backup tonight. So of course this happens. Uh, in 1870, unfortunately, Abraham died. So the really the founder of the whiskey company, he passed away in 1870. Uh, his son ran it, not necessarily wasn't really big into the business, but kept it going. And then in 1881, um, his grandson, Abraham's grandson, Henry Clay Frick, who was a, a businessman, uh, and already was very successful, of course, had the family distillery money, and then also was very successful in investments and banking and really kind of a magnet type of person. Uh, he actually, you know, wanted to keep the whiskey uh, company going. And just more kind of as a hobby or side business here, you think of a very rich person, kind of a fun company that he could keep. And of course, have access to whiskey for his friends and things like that. He actually partnered with two people, each were one third owners. So Charles Manick, I don't know that name, but I'm sure he's probably famous too in the Pennsylvania area. And the big one, Andrew Mellon. So when you think about uh, big 
business magnates in Pennsylvania. Uh, you know, in the 1880s, Andrew Mellon, of course, is a huge one, uh, you know, banker, investment, uh, actually served in cabinets of presidents and those type of things. So he was really uh, well known. And the three of them ran it and, you know, uh, did really well. They actually changed the name. It was still called Old Farm Whiskey up until 1888 when they changed it to Old Overholt and put a drawing of Abraham Overholt on the uh, bottle today. And that continues to this day. So Abraham Overholt is still on the bottle today. And that is the drawing that they use. It's changed a little bit here and there, but uh, that's what it looks like. By 1900, these uh, three rich business tycoons turned it into a national brand. So again, you're talking about very early on for national branding, but it was one that was out there and, and known. Uh, and it continued to run in 1919, uh, the grandson of uh, uh, Abraham uh, Overholt passed away. Henry Clay Frick, and he left his shares to Andrew Mellon. I don't know why he didn't leave it to the family, but at that point, the uh, family's out. The Overholts are no longer in that business, didn't leave it to any family members, left it to a, one of his business partners, Andrew Mellon. And then Mellon, uh, of course, uh, was the majority owner, and they go into prohibition. And they go into prohibition, uh, probably going to be shut down. And uh, the, of course, the company was shut down, but he had connections. He, at that point, uh, was uh, Secretary of Treasury under Warren G. Harding. So Harding allowed them to maintain their stock and then just sell it over time. They didn't have to do a, a fire sale or anything like that. They, uh, they weren't making new product, but they did, were able to maintain it and sell it, not to, to the public, because they didn't get one of, the, uh, one of the licenses, but they did sell it to those companies that did have the license, and it was branded Old Overholt. So you can find uh, Prohibition-era whiskey, uh, Old Overholt, in uh, the old, um, if you're lucky enough to ever find a bottle, it's still out there under the old medicinal bottles that you see, those uh, 375s that, uh, that can be prescribed. And uh, in 1925, there was pressure because um, uh, Mellon was, you know, he was in the cabinet of the president of the United States. We're in prohibition. Why does a guy own, you know, a whiskey company that is still selling whiskey? And there was pressure to sell that out. And he did. Uh, at that point, Andrew Mellon got out of it, sold the company off to a New York grocer. And uh, just a friend of his gave him a good deal on it. And they ran it until 1939 when it was bought out by National Distillers. National Distillers, of course, was this conglomerate of companies that got together during Prohibition. Many of the owners got out of it. And uh, the idea initially was, as Prohibition started, let's band together. We'll sell this because they had a medicinal license. We'll sell medicinal whiskey. And then when Prohibition is over, we'll go back and we'll all own our respective brands. Well, you know, over the time of Prohibition, people lose interest. They start buying out. Uh, some of the management team there starts buying others out. And by the end of it, they end up being a very large company that was National Distillers. And they continue to buy after Prohibition. And in 19 1939, they bought out that New York grocer and Overholt became their brand. And they ran it all the way till 1987. 1987, they go out of business, Jim Beam buys them, and that's who owns Old Overholt today. So uh, it is a Beam Suntory company. And uh, it's kind of gotten lost on the bottom shelf. It was a premier product. It was one of the best selling whiskeys in the world, maybe the best at, at one point when the, you know, around 1900, when they were one of the few national brands, maybe Old Crow was bigger, but when we're talking about the largest rye whiskey, American rye whiskey, it was probably Old Overholt. So that's pretty uh, interesting. And but they Beam, it wasn't a Beam product. You know, Jim Beam owns it. They want their their products. Jim Beam White Label. They want uh, the things that they've come up with, and that's really tends to be what they focus on. And what happens to these other brands they pick up? They tend to they tend to like them because they have excess, excess stocks that they need to sell. And how do you sell excess uh, stock without advertising and promoting and, and building up a brand? You buy brands that people know, Old Overholt was known, you make them a bottom shelf product, you sell it for a low price and you move some of that inventory that's a little bit off profile for the normal uh, whiskey that you're selling. So uh, that's something that uh, you know they do with Old Overholt and Old Crow and other brands too. So that's kind of was their destiny. But my understanding is that uh, the salesperson for Beam Suntory in Pennsylvania, and I would love to talk to this gentleman at some point, Freddie No tells me at some point he'll connect us. He has not yet, though. Uh, but he really became an advocate for that because Pennsylvania has such a history with rye. 
Um, they're known for their, their, their rye whiskey and the 95, five rye famous, you know, Pennsylvania rye or Maryland rye kind of that area of the world was, was really known for growing rye. And then of course making great rye whiskey. And he became an advocate for it and said, you know, this shouldn't be a bottom shelf. Uh, you know, he kept pushing for it in meetings and things like that and said, you know, we can do some things with this. So to Beam's credit, they listened to a single employee. And they have rebranded this brand, uh, given it an updated look, and then expanded it too. So this is the first one we're going to be trying here. This is the straight rye whiskey, 80 proof. Again, one you find typically on the bottom shelf these days. The second one we'll be trying is a bottled and bond offering. So this is uh, also available nationwide. So uh, you can typically find this one out there. Again, very affordable. That other one's at like $13 for a liter. This is like $15 for a bottled and bond whiskey very cheap and uh, and very good and this one you, you find at a lot of places i know we've got it in both missouri and illinois here so that usually tells me that it's pretty much everywhere when i can find it both sides of the state living in st louis the next two are special ones again started by someone in pennsylvania pushing for this to be an advocate for it uh, so they brought it back and i'm not sure why in ohio but they did bring it back in Pennsylvania, these two extra offerings. I think they're going to expand them years down the road. That's kind of the plan. But for right now, you can only buy these next two products if you shop in uh, Pennsylvania or Ohio. Uh, the first one is 114 proof. So that, uh, matter of fact, that shouldn't be the next one. Eh, yeah, I think we are going to do this one next because the next one's the super premium one. We'll save that for last, even though this is higher proof. So it's a, it's a higher proof offering, 114, and it is... Uh, they did two different releases of this. This one is the Ohio release of the 114 proof. You can get a Pennsylvania one. Is that, which one is that? Pennsylvania? Same one. Same one. Okay, cool. And then the last one, you got this one, Rob? I do. This one, this one was harder for me to get. I finally had a buddy get it for me. And, what, and then what's this run about 75 bucks? 75, there? yeah, 75. 75 bucks, that's what I thought. This one is uh, 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 11 years old. So it's 11 year old, old overholt. Um, and it is 92.6 proof. I have no idea how they come up with 92.6, but uh, that's, that's, that's that one. So we're gonna be going through all four of these today and, uh, and giving them a try. Hey, Steve. Yes. You can cut this in your live thing when you have to, but uh, so you're saying someone other than MGP makes 11 year old rye? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Sure. You get to Beam Suntory. I mean, they have access to so much stuff. I mean, they have so much stock. It's just, it's like a playground, really. They, they, have, they have all kinds of stuff. So, yes, uh, okay. they do. Not a whole lot out there when 11 year old range beyond that, to be honest with you. I mean, uh, sure, Heaven Hill has some too. Yeah, you know, the big uh, yeah, 11 years, a stretch for a lot of rye. So. Uh, absolutely, absolutely. So, all right, let's go back to our 80 proof and try that. And Rob, you live in Ohio, right? You live in uh, Cuyahoga Falls? Yeah, that's right. Uh, Northeast Ohio, right uh, between Akron and Cleveland. Yeah, that's where my uh, my in-laws, uh, well, my brother-in-law and his wife and their family, they live in that area. Matter of fact, they got married there at, uh, I don't know, the Holiday Inn on Cuyahoga Falls. They actually live in um, Uniontown is the town that they actually live in. But it's, I, you know, I work in Uniontown, actually. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, so that's where, so I, I go up there. I haven't been up there recently, but I've been up there quite a lot. Uh, before that, they lived in Canton, which I liked better because I was really into football at the time. Mm -hmm. I always go to the Football Hall of Fame, but yeah, I haven't been there in a couple of years uh, with COVID. We, they've canceled their birthday parties. That they have, they got three kids, and they, but they canceled all the, they have these big parties and we go in for that, but I haven't been there in a little while, but uh, it's a neat, neat part of the, the country for sure. Nice, yeah, nice Friday. Feel free yeah. to swing by for drinks in the bar if you're uh, in town. That's yeah, fun. we'll do. We'll do. All right, let's talk about this 80 proofer here. And uh, what are we thinking on the nose here? I'm getting black licorice. Black licorice, okay. I was thinking definitely candy, but I get like a maybe spearmint. Spearmint, okay. It really doesn't smell like a bottom shelf. No, whiskey. no. It smells pretty darn good. Yep. Getting like the uh, like the olive the olive juice and like a dirty martini a little bit. Okay. 
let's let's do one thing before we move on. Sorry. Let's pour the bottle and bond the next one. I always like to pour one ahead. I forgot to do that. Let's let's pour that one, have that sitting, and then we'll get back to some nosing notes. Sorry about that, folks. All right, that's poured. The hundred proof bottle of mine. All right, back to the normally scheduled program. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it smells to me. I'm definitely getting like light fruit smell, and may, may, you know I'm talking like cranberries or something like that. That's in there. Anything else you guys getting? It's a good nose. Let's 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 try it on the taste. Here we go. First one up. Cheers, gang. All right. I like it. It's good. It definitely get that uh, that rye spice, and it does it does heat up nicely. The mouthfeel, it surprises me the um, level of heat you get because the mouthfeel feels like an eighty proof to me, where it feels watery. You know, it doesn't have that viscous, oily feel. It it doesn't feel like that. It feels kind of more watery, which makes sense for an eighty proof. But you do get a nice little warm up there. It's short. It doesn't doesn't stick with you a long time. But I was surprised at at, at what you got there. Yeah. Steve, is <clears throat> this is 80 proof? Yes. My, my bottle, the sample bottle says 80. Oh, oh sorry. It is 86. Okay. I, uh, I got to get my glasses adjusted. I guess. Okay. <laughs> it's, 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 it's 86. It's 86. <laughs> <laughs> sorry about that. Yeah. What else? Mr. Bill, what are you thinking taste wise? What are you getting there? I don't know, but I like it. Okay. All right. That's good. That's a good review from Bill, as we know. Those of you that Ted needs on the regular, which pretty much everybody here <laughs> does. Uh, Rob, how about you, man? What are you what are you getting taste wise? Yeah, I, I agree with your assessment. There's a there's a substantial hug for yeah. an 80, 80 proof uh rye. Uh other than that, it's hitting all the, you know, checking all the boxes with what you're looking for for a rye. You know, you're getting all that rye spice, a uh, little bit of pepper little bit of spearmint. Yeah, rock solid. I'll be honest, it's the first time I've ever tried this whiskey. And, okay. Uh, far better than I expected. Yeah, for the price point and the fact that the price we're talking is for a liter, I mean, it's pretty darn good. Um, no no slouch there at all. Paul, what do you think? Taste uh, wise. I, I like this one. This is one of my go-tos. I always have them on the shelf um, just for a bottom shelf rye. Um, I get a lot of like pepper. Um, mm -hmm. but like, uh, I think that's where the spice comes from for me, but then I get like a sweetness in the mid palate, like almost like a grainy, like cereal or something. The only thing that I always sometimes pick up is a little bit of a, like a bitterness at the end just makes you want to take another sip. And so, yeah, that thing. <laughs> yeah, uh, Paul, I agree with everything that you just said there. Cause you, you hit it right for me too. I get the kind of the sweetness in the middle, the bitterness. I think I would equate it. I would have stated it at a, a little bit like a dry wine type of uh, at the end, but, but again, I, I think it just feels like I just need to take another sip. So um, yeah, that's good. All right, Brad, we're, we'll talk to you first and we'll talk to Sally. What are your thoughts on the taste on this one? Well, as usual, we, we had a little bit of a uh, conjugal uh, together based on this. Um, Is that the right word? No, it's not. But it, it's not <laughs> so, okay, that's my thought. I, I didn't on camera. Okay. No. Uh, I, I, I get a watered down pepper, and I like uh -huh. rye. I really, really like rye. Yeah. That's my, most times my choice. Uh, I wasn't sure Sal would like rye. And she kind of confirmed that with first sip, and then she got into it. So I'm going to say watered down pepper. Sal has a good. Uh, I'm going to say I'm going to, I'm going to enhance Paul's description there by okay. giving it a, to me, it reminds me of the haystack. And by haystack, I mean in the barn with the sweetness of the alfalfa, with the, with the mustiness uh, of the of the dirt on the floor and it, it uh it's nostalgic for me mm -hmm. 
So I grew up on the farm. She introduced mm -hmm. silage about a month ago or so, but you know. But we might get to, that's corn. That's more corn based. I know. So it's probably not going to happen today in rye, but yeah, farm. it's more wheat, wheat and grass, grass stuff. Yeah. The, <laughs> it, it's sweet and it's, it's it uh, is. But it's yeah. musty, musty and musty. Yes. Good. Mm -hmm. Yes, I agree. I, I'm I'm liking this again for the the price point. You always I I always I, I don't think everyone that we could bring on here uh, adjust their review of things based on price, and I feel like you always should. That's that's a disservice because this isn't trying to be a uh, 17 year old uh, Sazerac that sold a part of the BTEC collection or whatever you would say is a you know or Thomas H Handy. It's it's not trying to be that. Uh, not at that price point. So, you know, by, by framing it around what it is, I think that you can say that this is a great whiskey uh, based on, on the value that we got. Danny, what are, what are your thoughts? I agree with it all. I mean, mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, definitely. It's a bottom uh, shelf that can be a sipper. That yeah. doesn't always happen on the bottom shelf. When you think of bottom shelf, a lot of times you drink that and you'd be like, man, this is going to be a cocktail uh, offering here. And this one will hold up in a cocktail, I feel. I haven't had it in a cocktail, but I do feel like it would hold up in that. So that's that's good. All right. Last one's the legend. I, I'll, and I'll be honest, I haven't tried the last one that we're going to try today. So that's going to be kind of fun. I haven't tried this one. Uh, Rob, yeah. did, did you try this one already? You, you cheated and tried? I haven't, I haven't. I didn't try this one. I did not. I did. I did, but no spoilers for me. No spoilers. Good. Good. All right. Uh, Mr. I, Le Legend. I don't know if I have anything to add um, okay. to what everybody else has said. I will tell you, I have a friend that uh, <clears throat> his wife drinks rye. A couple years ago, I took, we were at a barbecue and I took a bottle of still 630s, five years. Mm -hmm. And Matt says, well, I don't know. He says, don't be disappointed because I bought her all kinds of rye, some high end, everything. She always goes back to old over old. And it wasn't until she tried to still 635 years that she says, yeah, this is pretty good. You know, <laughs> it might be better than old overalls. Yeah. Now, if but, I'm her yeah. husband, I'm furious at you because you've changed her from a $13 <laughs> bottle for a liter to a $100 bottle that comes out once a year. <laughs> so, yeah, I'm, I'm furious. At I, don't, I don't think she was that that head over okay. heels about it. But okay, good. He goes, but she, uh, he goes, no matter what I buy her, she always goes back to that. Yeah. You know, and. He's probably happy about that. That's not a bad thing. Oh, yeah. And he's a partner of one of the largest law firms in St. Louis. So, uh, uh, yeah. Money, money for a bottle of rye is not an object, you know? Yeah. But usually those are the cheapest people then. <laughs> right. Yeah. All right. Next up, we're going to pour our 114. We're going to let that sit for just a little bit. But then we're going to go to the bottle and bond. That's the one we're going to be drinking is bottle and bond. But we're going to pour or 114, which I've tried already, like Rob, I cheated on this one, but, but, but because I've had it for a while, I got it as soon as it came out. My brother-in-law in Ohio actually got it for me, sent me a bottle as soon as it came out, and um, I really liked it. And then I was having a hard time. I wanted to do an event, but I was having a hard time tracking this one down uh, just for friends that were going up there. They do keep a pretty good website in Ohio. I assume you follow that, Rob. And, and uh, Yeah, yeah, it's not bad. It's better than nothing. Yeah, it's not always accurate, I found. Uh, I mean, but it, it's like you said, it's better than nothing. So, yeah. All right. Let's, uh, let's nose this bottle and bond. It's light on the nose, but. Do we know, it, are all these uh, just differentiated by age and proof, but it's all the same mash bill? For yes. The whole line? It is. It's, yes. This this one smells like more traditional bourbon smells to me, like higher yeah. corn. But if it's all the same mash bill, that's kind of weird. Just being up fourteen yeah. extra proof. Yeah. What do you know, Steve? You know what the mash bill is on this? Uh, I do not know, and I don't think it says. You know, being they're secretive about that stuff. Yeah. They do not say, and you know, I, probably someone's got a guess online, just cause how online is, but. I think it's, it's speculated that they're a, they're a Kentucky rye, so they're just barely, you know, 50%. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That would make mm -hmm. sense on the sweetness that we're getting. I'm yeah. getting kind of like a honeysuckle off of it. Honeysuckle, okay. I was going to say like caramel apple, but that's weird. I like the nose on the first one better. Okay. That could be good for your wallet, Bill. 
We got to see. It all comes down to taste, though. Nosing's nice, but really, it's all about what we're going to do next. Let's taste it. Uh, cheers on this one, gang. Let's see what we got here. Uh, it's pretty darn good. I mean, um, yeah. the finish lasts a little longer. Finish lasts longer for sure. Definitely a little bit more viscosity. Like I said, the, the mouthfeel wasn't, the first one was the water mouthfeel. This one is not. Uh, tastes a little viscous. It's got some leathery notes and things like that that we typically more often talk about, like Paul was saying on bourbon, but. Yeah, it's a lot of richer tasting. Mm -hmm. I don't know if I'm tricking myself, but I'm picking up like some of that beam nuttiness. Beam nuttiness? Well. That would probably make sense. What, uh, let's see, let's start. We'll start with the legend this time. Any tastes you want to share off this one, Rick? Not in particular. <laughs> it's a little spicy, which it should be. It's definitely spicy. Kind of, maybe Danny's inside my head here, but kind of the honeysuckle y. Kind of got yeah, the honeysuckle. A little, a little sweetness to it. A little sweetness, floral, floralness. I'll go along with the honeysuckle. Okay. Danny, what, what are your thoughts on taste-wise? Oh, taste-wise, like, I'll agree. I mean, it drinks more like a bourbon than a rye. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But, I mean, and yes, I will, Tehran, and agree with also uh, kind of seem to pick up a little bit of that nuttiness in the back. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So. Okay. All right, real, thin mouth, real thin mouthfeel, though, just like the first one. Yeah. Yeah. It's definitely, definitely thin. Mr. Bill? I like it, but I think I like the first one better. Stick with the first one. Okay. I mean, it's right. just my opinion. All right. We'll start with Sally this time. We started with Brad last time. Sally, what are your thoughts? I'm, I'm staying with a hay, hay bale theme. Okay. And uh, I feel like this one just got a, a lot of clover in it okay. uh, with the alfalfa. So that's what makes it sweeter. That's where you get the honey part. Um, and, and it's it's a fresher to me. It's it's more of the um, the the November uh, the hay bale as opposed to the first one was more like um, <laughs> April. Been April. there marinating a while. Okay, I like this one better. Okay. That's very specific, but that's good. I like it. April versus May. Hey, bells. Okay. All right. Brad, what about you? Um, I There was a little more alcohol to it, alcohol heat. And yep. I'll agree with what Sal said, even though I can't process that. Um, <laughs> it, it's a good idea for him to just agree with me. So. Yeah. yeah. I, 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 did like, I did like the first one better, though. Okay. At this point. So, okay. All right, Rob, how about you? What are your thoughts? I, I absolutely cannot compete with that. That was impressive. Um, <laughs> <laughs> having never smelled those smells, I don't think, but uh, no, I, I, I think it's just that, that you, you can certainly pick up the higher proof. Um, this one finishes really strong uh, in, in my mind for a hundred proof, um, but nothing really jumps out like no single note jumps out it sort of tastes like i expected it would taste yeah okay all right let's uh let's pour that uh 11 year old and then we're going to be tasting the 114 proof now um the legend Danny and I were hanging out at my house one day right after I got this and I cracked this out. I don't know if you guys remember that. It's been a long time. Oh, yeah. um, oh, yeah. We were all surprised how good this was when we, when we tried it. And again, for a product that's, I don't know, 22, 23, $24, somewhere in there. I can't remember the exact price. It was you cheap. Know, a month ago when I was at uh, Westport in Louisville. Yes. They had the bottle and bond on the shelf. They had the 86 on the shelf and they had a tag for the, for the, uh, they had a tag for one of the others. 
Yeah, because they can buy things yeah. that aren't available to them uh, yeah. on the secondary in Kentucky. So, and it might it might have been this this one fourteen, but there was a there was a big open space, you know, like nothing there. Right, right. You do see some of that. It's like I I see it because I don't think it's a Kentucky release yet. You'll see that um, um, uh, benchmark. You know, they got all the different benchmarks now. Yeah. And they sell them in Indiana and they're plentiful over there, but uh, right across the border in Kentucky, it's not been a Kentucky product, but I've started seeing some of the liquor stores carrying it. And I'm assuming because it's not everywhere, I'm assuming that uh, the ones that you do see it at, you're seeing it, they're ones that are buying it uh, probably themselves, just driving across the state border and uh, picking it up and then selling it to their company, I would guess. I mean, because it looks to me, it a little, it's a little bit more expensive in, uh, in Kentucky, which means they're buying it at retail and then selling it, uh, you know, for a couple bucks above that. So, but again, it's still, it's so low priced. It's still a, you know, it's still a good buy. Yeah. Yeah. So, all right, let's talk about this 114. Okay. It, uh, again, kind of more bourbon notes, oaks and leathers. Yep. I'm getting a little more yeasty off this one. Yeasty. Okay. Yeah. A little hint of vanilla. Hint of vanilla. Okay. Maybe a touch of lemon pledge. Or I don't know, maybe I cleaned my office recently. I'm not sure. <laughs> <laughs> Just a hint of lemon pledge. <laughs> All right, let's try this 114 and see what we think here. Here we go. Special brand of lemon liqueur. Mm -hmm. Ooh, that's buttery. Yeah. Buttery. That's, that's really good. Um, uh, it's spicy. It's got a little bit of a slow fuse to it. You drink it. it at least for me, I drank it and I was like, oh, wait, a minute, where's the finish? And then all of a sudden the finish heats up and uh, and the, mouth feel. yeah mouth feels way better and uh kind of tastes like a cookie too at some point in there there's a little sweetness to it that mm -hmm. uh that i got that that i remind me of like a, a cookie so yeah it's really like good. a sugar doodle mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yes yeah that's uh that's some good stuff yeah there's absolutely nothing wrong with that mm -hmm. yeah I drink this all day long. This could be, uh, this could fall in the category of uh, what would be, an, you would call an everyday drinker, you know, where you stock up, you always have it in stock and available. And sometimes you're just in the mood for something like that. It's, it's good. And it's right at that. I always say that's kind of favorite proof is 115. So that's right there at 114. It's close. So, mm -hmm. all right, we'll start this time with, uh, with Rob. What are your thoughts here on the 114, Rob? Um, <clears throat> it's it's really robust <clears throat> you know to me this is a good reminder of what's cool about rye at four years old like this tastes so complex this is like to me this reminds me of like what uh you know what what uh what bookers would be if bookers was a you know was a rye right it just mm -hmm. feels it's got a lot to say uh it's got that really long finish to it um and it's got it's got a lot happening so i think that's a <clears throat> that's a damn good pour yeah yeah Paul, how about you? Yeah, I really like this one. Um, it's much more complex than the first two. Um, very like oak forward. I get a little hint of cherry in there, which is nice. And then it's that cereal sweetness or sweet bread right in the middle. Yeah. And the mouth mouthfeel is much better, but it's got a drying effect. Uh, I assume from the proof, but it's it's nice, it's a nice finish. I mean, I really like this one. Yeah. Well, anytime we get one where you detect a cherry note, it ends up, I know it tends to be your favorite. So <laughs> I wonder what, what the one, oh yeah, the cherry I love. Well, one with the 114, you think that has anything to do with old granddad 114 as some kind of shelf comparison? Because that's just kind of random proofs, not many. It is. It, it, I never thought of that, but it makes sense. And you're talking about. Uh, brands Bean. named after people from the same era too and they're both jim bean products and uh and you got a bourbon and you got a rye now at 114 yeah yeah it's and old granddad's a high rye bourbon too it's like 27 i think mm -hmm. that? so yeah that'd be fun to taste them side by side yeah if they would have put that 114 in this bottle which is pretty close to the uh old granddad, old granddad yeah 
Should really think about that, but now they. Do you know what the um, what the uh, the age on this is? Uh, it's not four age years. age stated. Oh, yeah, it is. It is for your straight rye whiskey. Oh, okay. Stated on the neck there. So, makes sense. All right, Brad. What are your thoughts on this one? I was expecting a little more. Mm -hmm. um, being a, a special release, 114 proof. I didn't know the age on it previously, but I had held off on uh, buying it or having a friend in Ohio buy it for me until we had this tasting. So, okay. You gonna do it or not? Pull yeah. the trigger? I don't know. I, I would do it for cocktails. Um, not sure it's a sipper for me. Okay. And I'm, I'm not getting any overwhelming taste out of it. So, Sally, do you agree with this or you're going to go out on an island here? You know, I, I'd call it a sipper for me if it was a night when I didn't really want to end up sipping a whole two ounces because it's really hot and it's got a long finish. It's kind of um, like a like a, a jalapeno chip or a real spicy Dorito where you have to you have to keep eating it to, to keep the heat down. But um, it's, it's a thin hot. It's not yeah, a, it's more uh, like a wasabi. Hot. <laughs> it's, 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 it's not I, horseradish style. Uh -huh. I've got some others back here that are hot, but they've got a whole bunch of depth to it. Mm -hmm. So, okay, there we go. We have to so chat come through. Ship it across. There you go. It's a nice offer. Thank you, Ryan. All right, Danny. How about you? What are your thoughts on the taste of this one? It hits wonderful, like I said. <laughs> I could sit and sip this stuff all night long. It, it'd be an everyday drinker for me. Till you, if, till you, if uh, I could fall find down. it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Till I turn into Freddy. Right, exactly. Start <laughs> texting people. Yeah, yeah. Oh my God, Rob, you got your phone number in there. Look out for texts from Danny later <laughs> if he drinks more of this. All right, <laughs> Mr. Bill, what are your thoughts on the taste on this one? Well, I. Uh, I consider myself to be a very blessed man. Um, <laughs> okay. My wife is an awesome cook. And uh, yesterday she made a really nice roast with potatoes and onions and celery and potatoes and carrots and all that. Uh -huh. Anyway, um, there are some peppery notes from this that I get from our roast. And hey, well, what more can you ask for? Yeah. To me, this is a little on the savory side, and I enjoy it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Very good. All right, Mr. Brenner. Hmm. I once again, I don't know if I have anything else to add. Okay. Okay. It's good. I I, I do like this one. I, I haven't already said. You know. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I'm, I'm a big fan. I think it's, I think it's good stuff. I would, uh, I would drink this one on a daily basis. Uh, so, um, but Brad, that doesn't mean we can't be friends. All right. Last but not least, this is the one I did not try fancy bottle. Obviously they're proud of this one, the 11 year old. So 11 year old rye. Uh, but if you think about the last time we got a, a rye from Jim beam, it was uh, Booker's rye, that 13 year old rye that they had amazing stuff. Made me very curious about this. Now, of course, this is a little bit lower proof. So 92.6, boy, at that 11 year, you're just thinking right away, gosh, I wish it was would have come in at about the 114 mark, but that's not the case. We're going to try it on what they put out there and, and see what we think. Um, I believe Rob's the only one who's tried this because he, he's using he's Ohio. All right. Okay. What is that? That's definitely fruity on the nose. What are we thinking that is? Floral and fruity. Floral and fruity. Yeah, I get like a light fruit, like a <clears throat> like a peach or a grape or something like that. Not a not yeah, a dark may, fruit. Yeah, maybe peachy is good. Or apricot, something like that in that family. Yeah. I think you're right. I'd go apricot. Uh, apricot, okay. <clears throat> all right, let's, 
Oh, go ahead. Sorry. What what was the what was the age on the Ohio release? One fourteen. Uh, that's four years. Okay. Four, yeah. four years, just like the bottom line. So. It's... Okay. All right. And the first one's not age stated, but uh, if you believe what they say online, they say it's three years. So I don't know. That would make sense. Typically, being bottom shelf stuff is usually three years. So. All right. Let's give this one a taste. Get a lot of oak out of that one. A lot of oak, okay. Makes Definitely. sense. For, makes sense for the age. This one's got the best mouthfeel, I think. Really coats. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Yeah. I almost thought the uh, the one fourteen had a better mouthfeel. One fourteen. Yep. But okay. All right. But. Some of that peach does come through. This one is definitely, and again, probably proof wise, maybe it makes some sense, definitely less spicy than some of the other ones. But again, pretty, pretty drinkable. I would say this one out of all of them would be, and again, based on the price, you don't want to, cock, it's not a cocktail rye, but um, this one would be the, the, the worst one to put in a cocktail, I would think. Just if you're doing a blind, say which one of these goes in a cocktail. Right. It's like it would get lost. It feels like this has to be a sipper. Right. This one's more like a bourbon than any of them. Mm -hmm. That's uh, what I would you know, say. I said the same thing about the cocktails. Like this one, I would sip. I would not make a cocktail. The, yeah. The Ohio one, I would definitely make a cocktail with. Wouldn't have a problem sipping it, but would definitely make a cocktail. Oh yeah, that would definitely. And again, for the price it's at, it's a, it's a cocktail uh, bourbon or cocktail rye, I should say. What, so, what's the price again? Yeah, it's like twenty five bucks. Rob, you can verify that for. Isn't this right around twenty five bucks? That's I think exactly right. It's either twenty four or twenty five, maybe yeah, 20, that, right in that range. Yeah, that's why I, I thought when thirty two, thirty two in Maryland. So the one fourteen. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But I, I thought in Ohio, it's, it's like 24 or 25. So, um, but a good price either way, you know. Oh, yeah. For, I'd give it. Yeah. Yeah. Again, you look at comparable, you know, 114 proof old granddad. Uh, 114 is in the $30 range. And you look at uh, 115 old Forester, that's 60 bucks. Right and these range. are one liter bottles, correct? No, no. The, the only one, the only one liter is the first is the low one. Oh. It's just the regular. Yeah. The rest are seven fifties. Okay. So, yep. Yeah. All right. Uh, Mr. Bill, you've uh, weighed in on all those so far. You've liked them. You've liked some better than the others. What are your <laughs> thoughts on this one? I like it. It's mm -hmm. good. It's got a, a really nice buttery uh, mouth fill. Yeah. Nice spice. Yeah. yeah. And Rob, how about you? So this is the kind of rye I like. I, I, I like a bourbon in the 100 to 110 proof, but for me, once it gets over 100 proof for rye, it feels like I'm going to get heartburn uh -huh. <laughs> after a while. So I, I actually like this proof a lot. And, and uh, as was said earlier, I, I, I what I'm a big fan of, I think Paul mentioned it was the the viscosity it's got that nice coating that i like in, in a, any any whiskey yeah yes all right paul what are your thoughts as you taste this one i really like it um like you said i wish we could have an 11 year that was at least 110 um i think it doesn't pack enough of a strong pronounced flavor whether it be rye or oak or anything to I don't, I, I don't know. For the price, I think I'd take two bottles of the 114 over this any day. Mm -hmm. This is still a great, a great whiskey, but um, I think the proof, I think I need a little bit more proof for the, the punch to come through with a ride for me. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, to open up the wall for 75, you know, you want a pretty good experience, and this is, uh, yeah, the, the, you, we're just at this point, those of us that do this stuff all the time, it's... Uh, you, you want the proof there, so 
So Brad, what are your final thoughts on this one? Uh, this one, uh, I, I like, uh, honestly, I like one in four the best. Okay. The, one, the 114 I find to be a little thin for the proof. I'd like a little more body to go along with the proof. Um, the 11 year mellowed. It, it's good. It's definitely a sipper, not a cocktail or a rye for sure. So, yeah. Okay. All right, Danny. Yeah. Oh, sorry, I Sally. I appreciate the, uh, the 11 year. I mean, I've always, I've always been attracted to things with, with age, mm -hmm. I suppose. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, and, and the 114, it felt like it was putting hair on my chest, which uh -huh. is not really a good attribute. <laughs> um, the, this, this one was, uh, um, smoother and, and thicker and, and felt like it, it was more developed. Okay. Danny. Yes. What are your thoughts? <laughs> Well, like I said, it's it's good, and like I said, it's it's more like it's the closest to a bourbon that a rye can get on this one. But I still prefer the higher proof. You know, I mean, yeah, it yeah. just can't. You know, even though this is older, and my bourbon drinking tells me to go for the older stuff, but uh huh. Yeah, I, I just yeah. you just can't. I, I, I'm more of a proof person, I guess. Yeah. Um, yeah. What do you think, Rick? I think the the eleven years. This is this is very good. Mm -hmm. I don't know whether it's two and a half times better than the one fourteen. Right. Because you were saying that this is what seventy five bucks a bottle. About seventy five bucks a bottle. Almost three times as much than a yeah. one fourteen. Yeah, I'd rather have two bottles of the four. Of the oh, you 14th. get three bottles for that, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah. All right. Well, there we go. All right, let's put that aside. Let's go back through one more time, just just to be sure we we think we know what we know. Let's make sure. So, uh, we'll do the higher level uh, overview. So we'll start all the way back down to our eighty six proof, basic old overholt rye offering. Anything of note on there? Circus peanut he came through while we were <laughs> yeah. around. I don't, yeah, know where, I don't know where that came from, but it wasn't there before. It's definitely got a sweet, sweet note that I did not pick up before. Yeah. 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 So these things do change sometimes. I don't know what's happening there. Someone's going to say Big League Chew next. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Just glasses. Mm. Well done. Bubble so, but it kind of does taste a little water. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and especially after we've gone through those higher proofs, that's, right, that's, exactly. that's difficult. Uh, you know, if we sat there and drank this one all night and expose ourselves to the other ones, it's a different a different feel for sure. But now it definitely, I said it was watery the first time around. Uh, you know, in the mouth, it definitely you know, and you know, tastes like your uh, feels like water in your mouth, and and uh, yeah, definitely less flavor than, than some of the other ones as we'll, we'll get to but very good for what it is but yeah circus peanuts does come through water mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. cube of cube of ice cutting the grass this is it right here mm -hmm. yeah good grass cutting bourbon we're, rye. we're so used to saying bourbon right. all right let's move on to the bottled and bond <laughs> this will be an interesting one too uh it took some hits the first time around let's see See so if uh, a second view at it. What we what we come up with? A lot of fruity notes. Yeah, it, it is oh, very fruity. Much better than the first one. Yeah. Kind of even a little marshmallow there. Spearmint. Spearmint. I'll go. I'll go mint. Mint. I'm not sure about marshmallow, but <laughs> I'll go mint. All right. Mm -hmm. yeah. All right, let's taste it. See what we got. Do I have to? Hmm. <laughs> yes, you have to. Mm. 
There's an emoji of fire coming out of my mouth. <laughs> <laughs> Not uh, not a lot going on there. Uh, again, going to the higher proof, coming back. Um, any, anybody got any thoughts on this one, taste wise? Anything they want to add to the official record for those watching it after the fact? I like it. It's good. Yeah, it's good. <laughs> it's, good. it's not horrible. Right. We've had we've not had not horrible enough. before. This, this doesn't feel like it. Yeah, we've all had, of these are good for the price, especially. I mean, all of these yeah. are great. I mean. It's a, yeah. This is a good, a good drinker. Yeah, and yeah, no, no burnt rubber band or anything like that. Right. Yeah, we had that one that uh, tasted like a, uh, uh, yeah, burnt tires. It's horrible. That's not a good. That's not a good tasting note. It's never a good tasting note. No. Burnt tires in a dumpster. Yeah. All right, uh, one fourteen. Red. This no, is... no, no, no. This is this is this is this is eleven. No, you know, my eleven. Yes, it is. It's Georgia Bourbon. Which one's the one I gave you from over here? <laughs> the other <laughs> system was messed up. That's Bardstown. That was from over there. Georgia Bourbon, Spears, French Lake, Roller Rogers. All right, let's let's give this one a taste. <laughs> I mean, it's my good. favorite. It's good. Yeah, I, I like I like that. I like the packs a little punch. It's nice. I like yeah. this one the most. I think out of all four, I think this is the winner for me. Yeah. I will agree. I, I'll agree. I am, uh, I am definitely going to grab a bottle of this and a bottle of Old Granddad One Fourteen and, and put them by my side. side. Yeah. yeah, put them side by side at first, but then I want to do a 50 50 because old granddad's like 27% rye, and we can assume this is probably 51 to 55. So we'll get like a 40% rye from, from Beam if we mix them. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. cool. That's a good experiment. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. oh, sounds like an event. I need to do that. <laughs> yeah. There you go. Maybe we'll do a blending uh, thing just with uh, old Granddad 114 and uh, old Overholt 114. So who, can come up with the who can come up with the best mix? I like that. Has anybody ever done the hot buttered corn? No. What's in the hot buttered corn? Yeah, I, it, I think I've heard this before, but I forget. 50 50 uh, old Granddad 114 and mellow corn. And mellow corn. It's delicious. I don't is know it? why, but it is really, really good. Okay. I like mellow corn and Bloody Marys or Bloody Bourbons, whatever you want to call them. So I like mellow corn in a glass. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's, not bad. it's not bad. Yeah. <laughs> I like mellow corn too. I famously <laughs> like that. All I right. think I skipped ahead that last time I said fire emoji, that, that was the 114. That was the 114. Okay. I, I, we may have gotten messed up a little bit. Okay. Strike that from the record. I strike that from the record. I like number two. Number two, okay. Yeah. Number three, me. Oh. We're on number four. Now we're on number four. On number four now, which is fruity. Great mouthfeel. It's almost there. It really is. Mm -hmm. It's missing that oomph of the higher proof. Is right. What it needs. I could fix this for them. If Beam wants to pay me to consult, I can fix this for you. I'm going to have to drink a lot. I'm going to have to get paid a lot, but I, 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 I can, I can solve this. <laughs> I agree. And, and you need a few crew members there. <laughs> well, I can't do this by yet. myself. Uh, this is a big job. Back you up. Yeah, yeah. This is a big job. I, I can't <laughs> do this by myself. So yes. Yeah. Uh, there's a 105, 107 for this. I think would be the sweet spot. Yeah. 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 It's 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 pretty darn close. It's a much more mature taste and mouth feels better. It is lighter in alcohol. It's just the, the 114 to me doesn't have have much body. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's, yeah. it's not bad. It's but not bad. I, I, I pulled out a comparable one. Uh, difference is it's seven and a half years instead of four. So uh -huh. we'll talk about that off, off camera. Okay. 
All right, let's go through just for fun and rank these. One, two, three, or four. Again, that's going to follow the progression that we tasted them in. So number one, or, or you know, number one is the uh, straight rye whiskey, just the normal everyday 86 proof bottom shelfer. Then we got the bottle of bond. Then number, th uh, which is number two. Number three is the old Overholt. And finally, the 11 year is number four. Uh, we'll start at the top of my screen. Uh, that means Mr. Rick Brenner, you're going to be first. Give me your ranking on these, which is your favorite all the way down to your least favorite. That's not saying any of them are bad. It's just saying. Okay, we're going to go uh, like one, two, three, four. Yes. Okay, three, four, two, and one. Okay, three, four, two, and one. Okay. All right. All right. Next up is Mr. Bill. Uh, three, four, one, and two. Three, four, one, and two. All right. Okay. All right. Next up on my screen is Danny. I will have to go with three, two, four, one. Three, two, four, one. Okay. All right. Next up on the screen is Sally. Four, two, three, one. Blast off. Okay. Okay. And next up is Brad. Four, two, three, one. Okay. All right. This is going to be close. Rob. I'm going four, three, one, two. Four, three, one, two. Okay. All right. Wow. It's really going to come down to you, Paul. It's this close. <laughs> it's close. All right. For me, it's three four two one <laughs> two one okay all you just put us in a virtual dead lock, <laughs> dead lock. i think we gotta go to the dog for the tiebreaker because I, I i i cast my vote too so uh, yeah, tell me which one. in in fourth place uh out of four was that. was n number one the just the regular straight old overholt that uh, got 12 points next was the bottled and bond got 16 points and then tied at 26 each was the uh, 114 and the 11 so it ends up tying so that's pretty interesting pretty interesting stuff not not too shabby bat phone bat phone mcnew McNew, yes, she doesn't have the samples. Uh, should we? Uh, should we call her? Let's, yeah, let's, let's, let's call her just for fun. Oh, we can't, we can't have yeah. a tie. We're going to call her blind and ask her to say number three or number four. If she says number three, <laughs> she says number three, the one fourteen wins. If she says four, number eleven wins. All right, we're going to call McNew. She can't hear you guys because I'm on headphones here, but you'll be able to hear her. <laughs> she, she, she she'll answer. She always answers. <laughs> McNew, we're doing a podcast. I mean, a, a live virtual event. Uh, the folks can hear you. You cannot hear them because uh, I, I, I've got them mic'd up to my my headphones. But we need you to. Get, we got a tie in our event we're doing, and we we just we decide we can't have a tie. So you need to tell us who should be the winner here, number three or number four. That's all the information I get. I don't that, get hints. Well, no, you don't get any hints because it's a tasting. It, it, since you're not tasting, you, we can't give you we can't give you any hints. Okay, well, I like odd numbers instead of even, so number three. That means number three, the 114 proof is our champion, thanks to How McNew. How many people did I make mad? Was it the wrong answer? Uh, Brad wrong Mitchell answer. Is, has got thumbs down. Uh, Rob Bean's got thumbs down. Uh, looks like a lot more have thumbs up then, so. <laughs> His wife Sally's got thumbs down. Okay. You made some people mad there, McNew. Oh, you know, uh, she did good. She did good. Yeah, she <laughs> Other did people good. you made happy, so yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. Thanks, McNew. All right, bye. All right, see you. Well, there you go. Through our scientific <laughs> testing that we did tonight, we can say safely that 114 <laughs> proof, uh, uh, old, 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 old
Yeah, yeah. Did, it was very scientific how we did this. So, so the young lady who hugs traffic cones decided this. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> yes, our traffic hugging McNew. Uh, yes, as good as any other scientific test out. I was just going to say, you know, I mean, you got to love it. Yeah. <laughs> yep. So there you go. That's it. That is our look at old Overholt. Uh, I'm I'm happy they're doing what they're doing. I love the fact of putting some money into a bottom shelfer and breathing some life into it. And, you know, they're not going crazy with it. Uh, you know, they're, they're, no, they're, and, there's things they could do. They're just, they're just making it where it's still accessible, still affordable. And, and you know, here's, here, here's what they're doing. So this probably shouldn't be a bottom, bottom shelfer. Right. I agree. It should not be. It's a, a company. Oh, no, 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 no. This absolutely has to remain a bottom shelfer. <laughs> well, well, for your wallet, it does, but I mean, right. you know, Right, right, and yeah. not, that means not everybody's out there chasing it. So that's another yeah. good thing about a box. Absolutely, so, right. right, exactly. No. Right, but I mean, it's. Well, I work with you know, um, we we're talking today about you know price and quality, and I said, well, you know, just because it's low low cost does not necessarily mean that it's bad. Right, right. You know, right. I, I, I said, I've had some expensive bourbons that you know were terrible and stuff that was you know I, I told my you know um Jim Beam reveal batch you know I bought for a seven ninety nine a bottle <laughs> yeah I you know it's, it's hard like, to knock it for that price and again it's not the greatest whiskey I'll ever have but it's not the worst no, for but seven ninety nine geez but it, it beats a lot of stuff for you know five times the price you know, right. right. Yeah. Well, that's just like, for example, I don't know how you feel about it, Rick, but uh, very old Barton Hunter proof. Yeah. Yes. I mean, I get it between, uh, I usually pick it up between 10 and $15. Right. And it's great. Oh, it's 750. Oh, yeah. No. Oh, I mean, only a 750. Or JTS. I, I, I mean, yeah, for a 750. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, it's cheap, very cheap, and it's a good everyday drinker. It is. Were, were you talking about JTS Brown? Oh, oh, I did. Uh, JTS Brown. Uh, JTS Brown is another one. It's yes. inexpensive. Our, sorry, our kid was making a smoothie, so we muted it, and we couldn't hear anything for a minute. Okay, I I was talking about the very old Barton Hundred Proof, <gasps> which is a good daily drinker i think because i can put i can usually find it between 10 and 15 dollars exactly and oh, then yeah. yes i will agree with you with the jts brown bottle and bonded yeah right not the 80 proof the bottle yeah. and bond the, the, the 80, bottle bond. 80 proof does taste like water with that yeah product. but the bottle and bond which Fantastic. you find for 12 bucks a bottle right yeah Steve, are you still recording for this episode, or we yes? Do you want me to want me to stop because we're we're at the end of this thing? Is it something you want on the record or not? I've got comments. So. That's why it's recording up there in the upper I'm, corner with the. I'm wearing glasses, but not all my glasses. Um. <laughs> I, I know how it is. I read I read eighty proof when it was eighty six proof earlier, so I know how that is. So so you, you is this stuff you want to talk about after the event? So no, so I don't it's... care. It, the um uh, I got stuck in a eighty and eighty six proof cocktail liquor bourbon the other day i was like i can't taste anything i looked at the bottle I was like well that's why it's 80 proof but that's how much bourbon has changed over the last 15 years in that the 80 proof cocktail now has to be made with 100 100 plus proof cocktail um well i mean to me flavor wise you're saying Meet yeah, your yeah. Fifteen year drinking progression of cocktails. Yeah, well, and uh, like a Moro over vermouth now for my Manhattans. So, yeah. anyway, long, long story. Yeah, you. All right. Well, we'll say goodbye to the folks that are, are watching along, just doing the event, and I'll stick around and we can chat about whatever you like. So, okay. thanks, guys, for tuning in. Really appreciate it. See you next time. All right.